That's a gorgeous place. Yeah, I haven't seen this house yet. Uh, I saw Rick at a... Rick is the incoming president for our Rotary Club, and uh, we had a Rotary International meeting down in Atlanta two weeks ago, and I saw Rick down there for that, and he decided to have a Rotary party at his house tonight, so I think there's going to be quite a few people from okay. the Rotary Club there, so... Yeah. And I've known him a long time. He's believe he's my good. brother. He actually... Uh, Jerry, he's... Is it? Jerry's a part of the Rotary, I think. Yes, yes. Jerry I Waller. Yeah, Jerry's your brother. You look just like you look a lot like. You better take a second. Yeah, he's my yeah. brother. Is he? Yeah. yeah. He uh, he's been in the club now about five years. I think, right. if I remember correctly. Yeah. yeah. Sorry about his separation. I guess heading towards divorce. I think they're divorced. Are they fully divorced? I, th I think they're yeah. fully divorced. And yeah. They're both. I, I I can't speak for both of them, but I know he's right. he's pretty happy now. I think she's too. And I think she's too. I think they're. You know. They're both happy. Life's too, sh life's too short, buddy. If you're not happy, get the hell out and go do your own thing. Yeah, they're, well, they're both happy and, and uh, they're they're both uh, you know got level heads and yeah. they're cordial, you yeah. know, and, and the kids, you know. But he seems to have the kids a lot. I do. I yeah. do see him with the kids quite yeah. frequently. And he and Danny Pond are fairly yes good friends, and I see him at the ballpark every once in a while. That's him. right. So, so you got stuck with this EDA mess? <laughs> yeah, um, I did. Um, what uh well first let me just start off i want to get all make sure i have all your information sure right. it's uh ronald r-o-n a-l-d and llewellyn l-l what's your middle name ron lee lee l-e-i-e l-e-e -E. yeah and then l-l-e-w e-l-l-y-n and what's your date of birth uh 9 and your address 905 mm -hmm. virginia avenue Royal. Now that's Rose Hill, right? Yes, right. Yes, correct. That's built in 1820, right? It is built in 1820. That's awesome. There's a lot of history with that place. A lot of history with that place. A lot of work with that place, too. It's about to kill me up there at the moment. And, um, you're on the, obviously, you're I'm on the, the board of EDA, EDA now, yeah. And I'm probably going to probably, I'm going to try to speak with everyone that's on the board of EDA because. EDA is the victims, right? Uh, and um, I just want to get at that. And your phone number was well. The best number to reach me is my cell, which you tried, which is five four zero two four seven two eight six three. Okay. And this home number is six three five three four one one. I have a many work numbers, but let's just let it go. I think you can usually reach me through those two. So you should... Okay. Some of the guys. That when from time to time, if they try to reach me, it's a, I have one business here in town called Fragrances Limited, which is down behind Wendy's, and they give, right. you, that, they give you that number, 636-8099. And she can usually, that's my head office, if you will, and she can usually run me down or find me wherever I am. Okay, now I've, I think I've been in there when I was in patrol years ago, because yeah. I found an open door. Right, um, you did. And I think I've gotten in there, it was a... Yeah. Uh, it's, I know exactly where you're talking right. about. I didn't I manufacture liquid fragrances, you're right. Yeah, and then there's on the front of it is the, uh, there was a insurance, is it an insurance agent? There to the left of us. In the Correct. Right, there in the white building in the right corner. Right. Then I farm, have, yeah, it's farm it's, uh, yeah. Right there. Debbie Morfitt's husband, I think, is an okay. operator of that one. Okay. How long have you been with the EDA, the Forest Board of Directors? I think this is my sixth or seventh year. Okay. And what, as far as being on the board of directors, what do you, what does that entail? Monthly meetings, mm -hmm. um, occasional special meetings. Um, it involves reviewing new opportunities for potential people coming into the community. It involves uh, working with the others on board to sort of determine what course we want the EDA director to follow as far as what her job responsibilities are. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, We've concentrated the last few years more on white collar uh, employment opportunities than we have on blue collar opportunities. Um, making decisions on everything from budget to uh, the businesses that are coming in and how much emphasis to try to put on trying to get one type or the other. Right. Um, All right. Um, pretty much it. So as far as this, you know, the EDA thing, what's going on? You know, we're involved. Um, Mm -hmm. What, what all have you been, uh, what all have you been 
told mm-hmm. by who? Um, I was made aware that Jennifer's house was vandalized or broken into. I'm not sure which early on. I don't remember the exact date, approximately two months ago, two to three months ago, I heard that. Mm-hmm. Um, I then heard that. And again, this was a closed session that the office had been broken into okay. um, and vandalized the ADA office. Mm-hmm. And um, I was made aware by Jennifer again of the fact that uh, her house had been targeted again not too long ago, for second time. Um, any, any details on that one? I understood it to have something thrown through the window. I don't know what it was or a door. Mm-hmm. Um, I vaguely remember, I think I remember her saying that uh, she was home. Um, and I guess from Jennifer, that's pretty much everything that I, I mean, she gave some details to be honest with you, I don't remember most of them at the moment. I just remember saying her house was broken into the first time. Mm-hmm. Um, the EDA thing. I knew a little bit more about that, with some of the slashing and and uh, of tearing up the chairs mm-hmm. and damaging chairs. I also knew of, um, apparently there were some pictures destroyed mm-hmm. from what I heard. If I'm not mistaken, I think a knife was stuck in one of the chairs or in a picture or both. Mm-hmm. Um, and this was all told to you? By Jennifer. Okay. By Jennifer. Um, and I think the only person who really said something to me, and I know for a fact they were trying not to let out too much detail about the break-in out there, but then I had a comment said to me by someone that, uh, a gentleman by the name of John Costello, okay. that I was unaware of when he said it. He made a comment that he had heard files were stolen out at the FDA, or EDA rather, excuse me. And um, when he made that comment, both Jim Eason and I were sitting at the table with him and he made it. Neither one of us knew anything about it. And I said, well, John, if that's true, I don't know anything about it. But I will tell you, John has a tendency to sort of come up with his own stories. So Yeah, he's a, a little eccentric, just to, to say the least. Yes. And you know, it's funny, um, John's been a friend of mine and, and he's also been a, a business partner of mine from time to time. Uh, he is at the moment on a land deal that we're involved in together. but. We don't see eye to eye on very much anymore. We've sort mm-hmm. of gone our own ways. So, okay. So Jim was with you when John told you something about files, and I said stolen. I said something to Jim about it the other day, and he said he didn't remember him saying it. But uh, you know, Jim's has got his own issues right now as well. I guess health, you, health issues, health right? issues, right? And he's yeah. not a hundred percent all. Where, where were you guys at when John? Ele- elements. Okay. Yeah. There's a group of us that get together on Thursday nights down there, and. Uh, it used to be just a tennis group. It's called the tennis group, but mm-hmm. it's expanded the last year with Jim's illness. We're having more and more people join us that just sort of know he's going to be there with me and they want to come say, say stop spend, by and say spend time, with spend time with him. Yeah. Okay. Uh-huh. And John seemed to know an awful lot about what had happened and I sort of left it alone because I knew it wasn't even supposed to be out there, more or less mm-hmm. that he was discussing it with people. Um, okay. So, so he was, uh, do you remember how the actual topic came up that uh, no, it was one of those typical things where John throws a hand grenade in the middle of the table and waits to see what the response is and, and you know generally when we get you know I must say we talk politics a lot we talk sure. uh, so what's going, going on in front royal so, so it's not unusual for so it it just I'm trying to gather who was there it was you I remember Jim, Jim and I remember um, John mm-hmm. Possibly Joe McGreevy, but I'm not sure if Joe was there yet then or not, you know, because people come in at different times. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think Mike Kitts, but Mike's having the same similar problems to Jim. He's, he's got Parkinson's disease and mm-hmm. dementia that is accompanying that. Um, I don't know if anybody else, I can tell you the normal group is, and I mean, it, usually Ethan Wisnat is there. Mm-hmm. Dr. Wisnat's husband, ex-husband, um, and possibly Fred Andrea, but I don't think Fred was there that day. So, And John was there as well. And John was there, yeah. I just found it unusual that number one, he knew there'd even been a break-in because nothing had been reported that. 
but I can tell you that's not atypical of John. John does that a lot. And frankly, he gets most of his information, we believe, from David Silek. David seems to feed him their buddies, and he's John's lawyer. Mm -hmm. And John has been one of these guys, historically, who wants to be in the know and wants to be somebody who knows everything about everything, but he's never done anything to put himself in that position, except no friends that are in that position. But he likes to be able to feel like he's on top of everything, so he frequently will throw He's been bashing the EDA pretty hard for the last couple months. Mm -hmm. and, uh, Why is that? I'm not sure. I mean, it, it started, frankly, I think it started when we started seeing some of the stuff in the paper that was coming out. And I'm sure you're aware there was a blogger in town that was harassing the hell Matthew that, Burdick. Yeah, that absolutely. Was, that was harassing Jennifer and others. Right. And uh, I think John is always susceptible to things like that because he believes everything he reads. And so from there, as long as he's read it somewhere, I think he takes it as gospel. Mm -hmm. And um, then, and I like David Solly, but David has a tendency to kind of be somewhat like John in that he always wants to be in the know and he wants to spread the know, but he doesn't always know the know. And uh, I think the two of them sit around and decide who's evil and who's good and who's bad. And... Uh, I think as a result of that, John comes away with impressions of how things are being done. And I think the two of them have been bashing the EDA considerably only over everything from the workforce and uh, empowerment uh, development that we were contemplating doing mm -hmm. uh, to the IT federal thing that was being done out here. And, uh, and there were other things that John got on to, but, you know, again, I, I can't. I can't picture either one of them having anything to do with the things that have taken place. John is a vocal pain in the ass, is the best way I know how to describe him. Um, but he's not a violent person. He's not a um, he's not a person who would go out and damage something or you know. I could see him verbally talking about it, but I can't see him taking any action on it. Um, and I think his he and David both are just the type of people that want people to think they know more than they really do. And they, to that end, John will take a story and string it in 15 different directions. And by the time he's done with it, he doesn't even know what it is. And he'll tell it over and over to the point that he thinks he knows what it is, but he, but he doesn't. So he's sort of a stir, likes to stir the pot. He does, pot. constantly. Yeah, he likes to start a conversation with an argument. Right. That's generally the way I'm term John, he'll, he'll come in and make an outlandish statement about something and he wants to see somebody disproving. Right. And that's kind of the way he approaches a conversation with a lot of people. So especially if you're in a group that knows him or know, he'll do that frequently at the, at the get togethers on Thursdays. And I used to do some other social stuff with him uh, at his house. He has what he calls a bocce thing up there on Sunday afternoons. Uh -huh. and, and uh, Does he live up Drewville? Yeah. And we used to go play bocce up there, and I just got tired of hearing his damn stories and hearing his... And he's, he's one of these people who's such a downer. When I leave there, I was... Even after a drink or two, I felt more I felt worse than when I went up there. And I'm thinking, you know, something's wrong with this picture. I leave here feeling worse than I got here. It's yeah, supposed to be relaxing. That's correct. You know, so I finally, yeah. I just... Last year, I said, guys, I'm out of this. I can't do it anymore. And I did it for about six or seven years up there with him. And I just... I didn't enjoy it that much listening to him, but, you know, I think if I could say this, I think there's a concerted effort right now by a certain number of individuals in the town of Front Royal mm -hmm. who want to see Jennifer gone. Okay. And they're doing whatever they can to make that happen. Now, whether it's disseminating false information, mm -hmm. which I think has been the major thing they've done. Um, I think they're responsible for bringing the blogger in, frankly. Um, I think they had an ally on the board, on the town council, um, and and the reason my name probably came up is I told the private investigator Ken Pullen that they used. I happened to walk in on something down at Shay's office. I used Shay Parker to do um, banners and stuff of that nature for me for different things, mm -hmm. and Shay and I have always had sort of a we've had a good working business relationship, but we philosophically differ on political issues. And I know that, right. but I'm okay on that for the most part. Um, and he and I have always been, I won't say friends, but acquaintances. 
and um, I was supposed to have picked up some material from him one day, mm -hmm. and I was running behind. I was late coming back from a business I have over in West Virginia, and I, and I was driving back in town. It was about 5.30, mm -hmm. and I thought, well, let me see if he's still up at his office. So I, I went up by there, and I opened the door, and did not. I saw his car out front, so I just assumed he was in there. So I opened the door to his office, walked in, well, and I did. There were about five people sitting in there in a little powwow. And you could tell when I walked in the door, there was shock on everyone's face. And uh, one of them was the, um, was, first of all, Shay was there. Mm -hmm. The other was a guy named Tom Conkey, who was an ex town council member. And um, Mike Graham was there. Um, and Stan Brooks was there. And somebody else was there that day, missing one of them. But anyway, you could have heard a pin drop when I walked in the door. So it was uh, Shay, Tom, Mike, and the, Stan. and the girl, the female, which was behind Bo. Bevan? Bevan, yeah, Bevan. We're all in there together. And, you know, when I walked in, it was kind of like dead silence mm -hmm. in there. And uh, so I, I kind of pulled back and said, whoa, guys, I obviously walked into somebody's birthday party. And uh, Shay said, well, I've got your stuff here, no problem, I've got it for you. And he, and he got it and I got out of there as quickly as possible, but it was pretty obvious that something was going on. And, um, you know, frankly, if I had to put my money on anyone in town that's active in getting rid of Jennifer, I would bet that that group is involved, at least peripherally. Um, I also know that the lady that was let go from the radio station, um, mm -hmm. Norma Jean, I can't remember her last name. Shaw. Shaw has been nothing but a vindictive uh, hate monger since she was released from the radio station. And now she's found a voice with the paper that Mike McCool's put out. So now they've got another band of renegades that, you know, ex people have been let go from other positions working with Mike McCool at, down at uh, on North Hill Avenue. Mike's always been a friend of mine. and. Uh, but he's got a group of people working with him. And, and I've known Roger, being Cheney for a long time, but, but the group of them mm -hmm. are the type of people who see a conspiracy behind every door. They don't, they don't want to believe that things just happen because that's the way they work out. They want, a con they want a conspiracy theory behind it that someone's benefiting. You know, Ron's benefiting, you're benefiting, Jim's benefiting. Somebody's got to be benefiting for them to be do this. They just can't understand that things happen. You know, development comes, businesses come and there's nobody really benefiting it's just the fact that the EDA's done their job they're just bringing people to the community mm -hmm. and um, but I think both Roger and Norma Jean have been extremely um, antagonistic and to the point if you watch Norma Jean during a meeting she almost has the most hate-filled look in her eyes when she's looking at Jennifer um, I happened to look at the last um, town council meeting and Jennifer was being asked a number of questions, and, and Greg, uh, uh, current chairman of the, count, of the EDA, Greg uh, uh, Drescher, Drescher, thank you, uh, was with Jennifer. And uh, if you just look at Norma Jean kind of in the background, her face is just filled with hate. I mean, you look at her, and it's kind of, she's just got this, you know, I want to tear your head off appearance to her. And judging by the way she's acted and some of the things she's written, you know, there's clearly an attempt to get Jennifer out of there. Mm -hmm. and, uh, so does all this play together? I don't know. It's awful coincidental. Um, but, you know, I, I cautioned Jennifer early on after the first break in to be careful. You know, she, she is a woman, number one, and that, you know, there are lunatics out there. Um, I had one bothering me for quite some time when I was on the board of supervisors named Bill Purcell. And uh, if you remember him, he also bothered Dan, and he bothered Doug, and he bothered just about everybody else in town. Pearsall? Yeah, Bill Pearsall, yeah. And he's been quiet, and I haven't heard much of him recently, but, you know, there for about a three-year period, he was all over everybody. And I was convinced at the time um, that there was somebody behind him. It wasn't just Bill Pearsall doing that. And... Um, and I think this blogger was much in the same sense that Bill Pearsall was to me. And um, 
So I just cautioned Jennifer to be careful, you know, try not to do anything stupid, pay attention where she was, watch where she was at. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, I don't have any firsthand knowledge of anything except I just, I do talk to a lot of people and I do see a lot of people in town mm -hmm. uh, time to time. And I do keep in touch with most of the members of the Board of Supervisors and some of the town council. And, you know, you, you just hear things and get gut feelings. But, you know, I, I can tell there's an effort to remove Jennifer. Um, and that's pretty obvious uh, to just about anybody. And our board discussed that recently as well, that there was, seemed to be a concerted effort outside our boardroom um, to get rid of Jennifer. She was up for evaluation here just recently, and we discussed her annual review at our last board meeting. And mm -hmm. um, it was discussed during that session that there appeared to be a, a concerted effort to remove her. And to that end, we decided to reaffirm our belief in her by giving her a pay raise. So, okay. yeah, and from what I understand, she's doing a lot. She's, uh, I mean, she's well, she was just voted the number one uh, last year. Was voted number one EDA director in the state of Virginia. We didn't make a, She didn't want us to make a big deal she's about it. She's got the new market, mar, new, mar, new market housing nice. credit going. Yeah. Uh, she's Leach's Run Parkway just opened up. Right. That was that project. Uh, you know, and you know, and then the, it's just a shame because the new middle school going in yeah. out there. There's, I mean, the town. It's. There's a lot of stuff going yeah, on. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff going on. But you know, there's people that no matter what you do, and you know, I live in the town, and this is the hardest part for me. And I, but I do business outside of the town of Front Royal and a lot. They shoot the, the town of Front Royal shoots themselves in the foot more often than anybody I've mm -hmm. ever been associated with. And you know, it's funny because 20 years ago, people felt the board of supervisors were in terrible shape, and the town council was in good shape. Now the town council is viewed as being a bunch of idiots, and the, and the board of supervisors are, are viewed to be more productive than they are. And uh, but you know, I'll tell you, when I'm trying to do business outside of Front Royal and bring people here, I constantly, constantly hear people say, "I don't know, I'm not interested in doing business in the town of Front Royal." And um, for example, I'm, I'm trying to court several different national builders to come here for different projects and, mm -hmm. and, um, and one large regional player. And, but every time you sit down with them and say, well, it's located in the town limits of Front Royal, it's almost, almost like an automatic pullback. And there for a while, when you engaged an engineering firm and told them the project was in Front Royal, there was a 10% markup automatically on the cost of the project because mm. they knew that they were going to spend more money trying to get it through the town council and go through all the bullshit that they make you go through. And uh, it was just, and it, and it hasn't it hasn't gotten any better. I mean, you know, you still pick up the papers and there's always something going on. It's like the pot's always stirring. Mm -hmm. And the town, and the town council, and the town of Front Royal. I agree with you, and it, and it makes it hard. I mean, it really does make it hard. And then the town council comes to us and says, "Well, you're not bringing us anything." Well, you know, guys, we're trying hard. We're bringing a lot of people here that look at you, but you know, they read the newspapers, and and I and I'll tell you that as a fact. As so a, you, you see, the town council as being a stumbling block, right, to the development that the town. The, 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 the opportunities, well, I'll just give you one example. Mm -hmm. This thing with IT Federal, okay? Mm -hmm. This company came in and um, offered us the first opportunity at high paying white collar jobs that we've had in a long time. It came through uh, Congressman Goodlatte's office. We had nothing to do with it. It was brought to us by him. Um, he sits on a committee in Congress that he has the opportunity to see a lot of businesses come through his, his committee. And this person, this company, Entity, actually contacted him and said, we've been trying to find a place in the state of Virginia to locate. We're not having much luck with the governor's office. Can you point us in the right direction? We'd like to be located close to Washington, D.C., but we're interested in just you know, maybe an hour or two outside of, the, of Washington. And so that's how they came to us, okay, through, through Congressman Goodlatte's office. We were made aware of them as a provider of, of services to the federal government and that uh, they would uh, employ up to 600 people uh, over a two year period and build a 60,000 square foot facility out at the Aptex Blight and be our first, our first client out there. Well, we were ecstatic. I mean, you know, you're thinking, okay, mm -hmm. here's a guy that's gonna get this thing started. We're gonna get people out there. That process started three years ago almost three years ago now. 
the town council has either moved the road running through it or changed the uh, topography to the point that IT Federal has now had to do three different site plans to try to locate their business there because the town council keeps changing. They keep either, we want the road over here, we want the road over there, we want it to be at an elevation of this, we want it to be an elevation of that. And they've moved it up and down on him three times. And it runs, the last two times I was told it ran over $20,000 in additional engineering fees they've had to eat because the town keeps moving things around and changing it. And people go, well, you know, why hasn't this place open? Why aren't they out there? Why are they doing business? They've been trying to be in business. You know, and the EDA kept saying, come on guys, get this thing out, get this thing out. And they kept telling us, oh, we're trying to be proactive, we're trying to be proactive, and but they're not. They're just, they, they have a tendency to delay and stall everything they do. And um, I don't know whether, I don't know whether it's coming from the planning department, I don't know whether it's coming from the town council, but you know, here you've got an entity that now, you got a member of the town council, the rural, Benziger, Boeing, or whatever her name is, um, who accused him of being money launderers. You know, why he didn't go after her separately, I'll never know, but the guy that's the head guy, uh, you know, she made public statements that were just totally out of line. And he didn't, they didn't do anything. And uh, they've stayed with us. Is that uh, Kurt Tran? Kurt Tran, yeah. I mean, why he would, thank God he has, uh, but at this point, they've now informed us they're downsizing. They're only going to build about half the size they originally said they were because of the comments and what she did. And that he'll wait and see how the community res community responds to him after he gets up and running. And uh, but and that's just a typical example of what we've gone through with the town council and on and on the EDA. Is there an adversarial role? I don't think so. But there's not a there's not a working relationship that's going very well with the town council. And to that end, about a year ago, they pulled out their financial support for the EDA and, and hired their own guy uh, or person to do it for them. And, and, uh, but yet they still expect us to feed to them. And um, that's kind of tough. I mean, you know, you want to bitch and complain all the time, but you don't want to financially support it. And yet you expect us to do all the heavy lifting for you. And uh, you'd be amazed at the start of when Jennifer does her uh, monthly reports on what she's done during the month, I'd say the majority of the reports that she gives, there's, she's shown as much activity inside the town as she's shown in the county. And she'll, she can't name the entities, but she'll say we showed uh, retail properties, we had a new business owner looking to locate it in the town, and she'll, she'll give you the number, she won't tell you the entities. But right. if you listen to her, her presentations, it's, it's pretty much equally divided, and sometimes it's more to the town's favor than it is to the county's. And, uh, but the town, always, the town always felt they didn't get their fair share. And the problem is, they hurt themselves, they just don't, they don't understand what they've done. Right. But how that affects what's going on out there, I have no idea. Um, <clears throat> just to to clarify, um, I know you know you had a meeting, a board meeting. I don't know if you were there, um, and you know there were some pictures and things like that because obviously this is where I don't know whether that was told to me separately or whether that was told to me in a board meeting. I just know that Jennifer and I discussed some pictures that were damaged. Did, now, did you ever get a chance or opportunity to see mm -hmm. the pictures, or mm -hmm. has Jennifer showed you any of the pictures or anything no. like that? No. Okay. I just understood some pictures were damaged or band I think vandalized and I think I heard one had either a pencil or a knife or something stuck through it in the back of a chair. Mm -hmm. Now I don't remember whether Jennifer told me that. Mm -hmm. I think she probably did. I don't mm -hmm. know that anybody else. And did she tell you, you know, who the picture was of or anything like that? I think she indicated it was her, but I'm not hundred percent positive of that. I think yeah. she indicated it was her. And and that's why we're involved, um, it's pretty personal. Um, no, when, you start, no question. Yeah. when you're doing things like that, it's personal. Right. Uh, and her being the director of the EDA, people right. having issues with the EDA, uh, you know, she's basically the spokesperson. When people, right. you know, right when everyone thinks of the EDA, her name's going to pop up. I mean, right. it's not going to be no. all the board of directors. No. It's going to be, you know, her name's going to, this is going to be the one that pops up. Right. And um, so everything that's going on is going to probably be directed at her. Mm -hmm. and you've given me several several names that popped up um, as far as people that have issues with EDA and Jennifer and mm -hmm. her job. Um, 
Is there anybody who you can think of? I know you said Norma Jean. When you see her in this she's meeting, just, yeah, she's just, just just look at her eyes. I mean, look at her face. I mean, when uh -huh. she's or when and it, she's not even on camera. She the camera's aimed at Greg and Jennifer, and, mm -hmm. and just the look at her, she just looks like she wants to rip her head off. Right. Uh, and some of the things that Norma Jean's written to me, I mean, I don't respond. First of all, I don't answer that newspaper. If they write me an email, mm -hmm. I, I don't ever answer it because we our policy is go through the EDA office. Right. We don't not, we don't generally answer separately, and uh, so I wasn't answering. She wrote me a couple of things, and she wrote me an email and says, "Whether you answer me or not, I'm going to publish the story. The facts will get out." And I'm thinking, "Okay." I still didn't answer you, so just left to go with that. But that's just the mentality that she's taken since being released from the radio station. And I mean, right. you know, it's kind of like somebody's been. She blames the EDA for the fact she was let go out there. In reality, she probably was let go for that reason because she was harassing Congressman Goodlatte's office. Goodlatte called us and said, you got to resolve this. So Jennifer then notified the, the guy that owns the radio stations, I can't remember his name, and um, told him what was going on and he fired her. So I'm sure in Norma Jean's mind, indirectly, we were the cause of that. And. Uh, but after Goodlatte's office contacted us and said, enough is enough, I can't have her calling here all the time. You know, we've got to bring this to a stop. You know, we felt like we needed to do that. And uh, so, you know, just one of those things, but obviously didn't, didn't make her happy. Quick question um, about John. Do you don't have his cell phone number, do you? I, I do, and I can give it back to you. It's in my cell phone, but I left my. I told you my phone was dying yes, when you called. Right, you did. So it's charging at home at the moment. Okay. I don't remember what it is. I can get it for you. Okay. Um, obviously, my next step is to try and speak with John to see, mm -hmm. it, you know, where he got this information. If he mm -hmm. did get, in fact, get this information from anybody, if he'll even talk with me. I know John uh, has a disdain towards the town. Towards everyone. Well, as, he, as he's gotten older, his disdain now includes most of his friends. Yeah, I, I can tell you. I, I can tell you. I just I know for a fact he doesn't like the town. He doesn't like right. the police department as well. No, he doesn't so, like anybody. No, you're right. You're right. <laughs> just, but you know, but I, there's there's certain levels that he you know he dislikes people, and I think we're 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 up there on his list. Um, so I, I I don't know if he speaks wants to if he will speak with me. Um, if he does, that's fine. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I would appreciate it, but I'm, I expect John to, you know, tell me, you know. Sorry. Uh, yeah. yeah. No, no, thank you. Yeah. We may have better, better luck with David, uh, because I think that's all mostly where John's information comes from. Yeah. But uh, you think that's where he's getting fed? Well, there's no question. I mean, they, they socialize together. They sit up there and drink at John's house together. I've seen him up there many times. When I go up there, David's up there with him and. Um, he, he uses David as his lawyer locally, and I've always thought that was a fitting matchup for two people. And uh, so I'll just leave it at that. But I think you could, and David goes to my church, and I've seen him. I've known him since he was about this tall. And, but they both seem to march to the beat of the same drummer. Um, they have a lot in common, the philosophy, and their actions are very similar in a lot of ways. And, and uh, but again, I don't. I can't see John being part of something, but I can see him spreading a, a rumor that he that he heard. Right. Um, he's smart enough to know not to do something like that. I mean, I, right. do you think um, just uh, and I'm just you and I talking as far as the honest opinion? Um, do you think he was just said that as a kind of like a fishing expedition type thing, is to Probably. see what he could get out of it? Probably more than and both more than what he knew, and it never went any further than that. When he asked a question, I said, "John, I don't even more than that." Right. I said, "I didn't know that happened." I said, "And I'm not even sure there was a break-in, but I'm hearing rumors there was." But I said, "I don't talk to Jennifer all the time." And I don't. I mean, you know, in reality, I talk to Jennifer. Well, I see her at Rotary, and I'll say hello. But uh, you know, as far as discussing uh, town business or what's going on with her, at the most, probably twice a month. You know, at the meeting, and then one other time I'll talk with her sometime during the month. Um, but I, I think John just did it to throw it out on the table to see if anybody would comment. He wanted to know more, is what you. It was right. kind of, the feeling I had when he said it was he just wanted to know more. He thought you might know more and wanted right. you to want to fill in, fill in his, you know, and, and said, "Sorry, I don't know anything about that." And uh, that's where it ended. So okay. I, I, you know, Jim, when I said something to him, I said, do you remember John talking about the uh, issue with the uh, break-in out at DDA? And he said, well, I know we've talked about it a couple times, but he said, no, I don't remember him talking about it down there. So 
but John, John and as I said, there's a bocce group, and Jim is still in the bocce group, and I know that's the type of thing they would talk. We would talk about mm-hmm. if I was still part of that. I'm sure we would talk about that on Sundays up there. But, right. Um, yeah, I don't know. It's so hard to say that I, it came from any one person, but there's. I find it hard to believe somebody's even taking the steps of vandalizing something. I mean, yeah. it just. You know, that kind of pushes it to a new level. I mean, it's one thing to even have a blogger. You know, that that's that's right. a step in Well, you that have the blogger, you have the press. Right. And then you have uh, yeah. current members of council being, you know, fed, so, it, yeah. fed information from, you know. Well, the bottom line is we can't hold a closed session meeting with the town council without it getting out. I mean, and that, that we had that trouble at one point when I was on the board of supervisors with one member that... You know, I remember several times I would leave a closed session. I couldn't make it from down at the office, the county office, to my house without the phone ringing by somebody on the press that they'd been leaked any information from our uh, closed session. I just left. <laughs> and it was one council member at that time, that, or supervisor member at that time, who said that his opinion was the press was entitled to know. And uh, we ended up sanctioning for it. I mean, basically, every time we held a closed door meeting, he was going out the door releasing information. Wow. And uh, I think they've got a certain amount of that that's going on on the town council right now, or mm-hmm. was. Now, whether it'll continue now that she's gone, that girl was a, was a wrecking ball. I mean, she was only here a short period of time, but she really caused a lot of harm um, that's going to take us a while to recover from. So now it's going to be interesting to see who ends up taking that seat. I know there's several people vying for it. Um, but it's going to be interesting to see who ends up getting that seat because other, one of the people vying for it the most is part of the problem right now. Who's vying for it? Mike McCool. Okay. Yeah, that's true. And Mike's got just a chip on his shoulder. I've talked to him because he didn't get elected and he didn't get appointed to a couple of different things. And you know, now he thinks everybody's out to get him and that's why he started that newspaper. And, right. You know, and, uh, the only good news is that I don't think anybody reads it. <laughs> It's an online, number one, it's online. And, you know, no, number two, you know, I found when I was on the Board of Supervisors that there's a group of maybe five to 10% of our total population in the county that follows that stuff. Most people don't follow the day to day annex of the Board of Supervisors or the Town Council. They just they just take care of things. And then if things reach a boiling point, they'll, then people start paying attention. If they right. hear there's a problem, they'll, they'll pick up and start listening. Yeah. But, yeah. Generally, most people don't have much one way or the other knowledge of what's going on. They just, oh yeah, I heard something about that, or I read something about that, or you know, something. You know. Anyway, I like your place up there. I'm gonna let you go. Here, here's my card. Thank you. If anything new pops up, sure. if you hear anything, um, you know, just in the roundabout, just out and about talking, because you know, you being out there and right. just talking to people at social clubs and things, you'll hear things. They'll get back. Please don't hesitate. Give me a call. Well, I was told they were going to make an announcement about the break-in. Has that taken place yet? We no. haven't. We're not. You're not. You're we're not. not gonna, gonna, no, we're not going to make any announcements. Um, okay. I don't know if um, I don't know who's going to make the announcement. I know we're not. You're not. Um, we're not making comments on anything uh, okay. because we've got an open investigation here. Okay. Um, we're still. Well, can I say something to you? And, and, and again, it's just you and me speaking here. Yes, sir. Several things happened at that, and I got this from Jennifer. Jennifer feels like, for whatever reason, that the local police department didn't take this seriously. Mm-hmm. I'm just telling you what she told me, okay? Mm-hmm. And part of it had to do with Crystal, and she did tell me this, so, but she said that Crystal asked her if she should excuse herself, excuse herself from this investigation because she had heard that Jennifer suspected her husband of having some level of involvement in this, and uh, George. Mm-hmm. And Jennifer said, I don't know what you're talking about. She said, I've never said a word about George. And so she basically said, I don't want you to recluse yourself, and you know, basically I want you to just do your job and find out who did this. I can tell you, because I've never heard anybody mention George's name anywhere other than what Jennifer told me that day, okay? So I think Jennifer was disappointed that she felt like the investigation stalled or wasn't going anywhere. And, um, I mean, it's always hard. Investigations don't go as fast as you want them to either. I think she's feeling threatened right now. I think she's she's scared. 
I mean, I think she's worried that there's somebody out there. Um, I think she felt that that in her conversations, now whether it was who it was, I don't know, that there was too much emphasis being put on did possibly someone inside do this? Was it Marla or was it Missy? And, and uh, or was it staged even by Jennifer? I mean, I think there was some thought that, that well, there was some blame there. And here's the thing: when we when we go into any you know any investigation, um, you know one of the things that we have to do is process of elimination. Right. And in order to do that, um, because those things do come up, and life is stranger than fiction, so you do want to eliminate everybody who's inside because you know you look you have to look at the the simplest things first right same thing you know when you look at a you know when you're fixing a, a problem on a vehicle or something the first thing you should check is there gas in it right. um, you just do the simplest things first from what you have and then you work your way down so yeah i mean um, the first time i spoke with jennifer was um, on the scene there uh, at the eda and i sat down and, you know, just she gave me a list, and you know, because you know, when I explained to her these were, from, uh, you know, this was, you know, this is a B EDA. It, she, the victim, is the EDA. Um, mm -hmm. Because I'm not sure she looks at it that way, but I agree. I, I agree with you. Correct. The, the victim the, is the EDA. The but victim, I think she the, thinks it's more personal. The victim is the EDA, and it was. I mean, and that t type of attack was, you know, from from her. When you look at that type of a, the things that happened, you know, right. yeah, I mean, it, it's it, it's personal as well. She is the She's the director of the EDA, so mm -hmm. of course you know. So, but the EDA is actually the victim of the BME mm -hmm. where they went in, and she is also a, a victim of, of vandalism. You know, right? Because uh, somebody, somebody, somebody's doing that. Yes, and we're we've we've taken steps, and I've I've spoken with Jennifer um, on this as well of you know what we're doing actively. Um, you know, we actively, um, or, you know, we're we're keeping. You know, we have officers there all the time. Um, mm -hmm. And and we're making sure that nothing is going to happen right. there again. Right. Okay. Uh, and if it does, I mean, I can't say that it's not going to happen. But if it does, you should be in a position to make an arrest. Yes. Yes. Right. Exactly. We should be able to yeah. make an arrest in that position. Uh, we're in that position well, because our house is in the county. I guess Danny is doing. Danny's covering her house. Isn't uh, she in the county? I believe so. Yeah, she's right up. She's off of uh, 55 out there towards Linden. I think she's right outside the town limits, yes. if I remember correctly. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, that's what but as far as EDA goes, you you pretty much feel secure there. And that if they, it, they it is. Yeah. It is secure. Um, you know, and Jennifer has since this, you know, she's as far as the EDA, I know they've taken steps. Right. They're in the process. They're taking steps of preventing things like this from happening again. Right. If, the, if it does happen again, they're, we're going to be in a better position to make an arrest like you know where right. we can you know, we'll have more to go off of when this pop up we don't have the thing is that we sent things to the lab right and our it's a state lab and it takes months yeah. Yeah. It, takes, it takes months for us to get stuff back to for us to even go in the right direction so and in the meanwhile we in the meantime we have to follow up speaking with people and tracing and tracking down no, I know it never goes fast. So I just, yeah, I think she just, down. for whatever reason, she didn't feel like it was getting any traction. And uh, I oh. think that's, and to be honest with you, I wasn't aware that we'd hired an, uh, an investigator on our own until about a month ago. And, right. and mixed emotions about that. Right. But uh, what do you feel about it? Well, I mean, I think, you know, never have her to have an extra set of eyes. Uh -huh. I mean, and I'll go along with that. And I, I, I don't. I did not know Ken personally. I've known of Ken. I know mm -hmm. what he did for a living, and he seemed to be reasonably efficient at what he did. Um, he's not an in-your-face type of guy, and, and mm -hmm. you know he just seemed to be a methodical worker, basically, is what I gathered. And uh, so, you know, when I when I found out who it was, then I thought, okay, well, you know, it never hurts to have another set of eyes on something. And, you know, honestly. I realize you guys are up your rear ends and stuff half the time, and some things just take priority over others. So you know, that is, that is true. And so I thought, well, you know, maybe it's just taking a little longer right now to get to the bottom of this. And you know, if it's a one-time event, it's over and done, and let's let's move on, and we're not right. going to worry about it. But when it shows a pattern of continuing, then I I grow more concerned uh, for Jennifer. Or really, I mean, um, yeah. mm -hmm. that's the last thing that I want to be. Have I would feel horrible if something were to happen to her. And she'd not taken the precautions and not done what she felt right. she needed to do. And um, well, so, yeah, 
I agree with you 100 percent. That's yeah. we are on our end. We're taking it seriously. We haven't had any incidents out there at the EDA yeah. since then, no, um, and we're. It's but, somewhat but, isolated, and you know the the chance of somebody. But you know, I say that about my house, and I had stuff going on nonstop up there. So I mean, it, it, you just you never know what drives people to do things. So no. anyway, I, don't know, I like your house up there. That's pretty. Yeah, that's pretty piece of property. Thank you. I think most people think it's a through street on my driveway. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was out there mowing the other day. These two guys came up the driveway, and I said, "Guys, that's this private property. What are you doing?" Well, we can walk up through here. It's, it's a road. I said, it's a driveway. And he said, well, we're in a hurry. I said, it's still a driveway. It's the Royal to Virginia? Yeah. yeah. No, no, no. Okay, well, I'll tell you what, that's gorgeous. If you would, um, also.